Hello, and welcome to the Black Ponder. It's Christmas Eve, but this is Cali, California. So we got a nice sunny day. So sunny that I have to wear my shades because the sun is directly into my eye. And you know, it's a nice sunny California day up here at Christmas Eve. <laughs> a little chilly, but nothing too crazy. We don't see snow in my neck of the woods. Today, we're gonna to be talking about a modern classic in uh, feminist theory, and that is Judith Butler's Gender Trouble. Now, in this book, uh, Judith Butler proposes that gender is not so much an attribute, more so it's a, an action, um, it's performative, that people aren't born with that attribute of gender, rather they act a certain way, and this way that they act expresses their gender. That's how we determine what gender is. So in this way, um, identity is more performative than it is anything else. The definition of who we are, specifically gender, is defined by how we act rather than who we are, how we're born. This is what Judith Butler proposes. So the whole notion of what it means to be a man, a woman, feminine masculine it really it just depends on you know the way you act is how you perform in society it's not how you're born necessarily and this is very important i think this is very important because it tells you about the nature of reality it really does it clues you in on what what reality really is and how reality really is actualized i think there are people who take issue with this book. Uh, you know, one, they just, people just don't like the feminism. They just hear that and they, you know, they get upset. And then two, I think a lot of people look, read it and, or they hear about it and it's like, what are you, what are you trying to do? You're trying to, like, is this some sort, some sort of intellectual gymnastics? Some sort of, uh, you're just trying to blow my mind? <laughs> Am I like caught up in some matrix situation, you know? And I just want to say that's not what this video is going to be about. You know, I'm not trying to like blow your mind. You know, I'm not trying to turn your beliefs upside down just for the sake of of shock value, right? You know, what we're trying to do at the Black Ponder, we're trying to get at the truth. We're trying to understand the nature of reality, the true nature, and in that way we can be in a better position to do what's best for the world. And you know, that's what this is about, you know, in the end. So, I mean, we're trying to get the truth. And that, that sometimes has an arch in its task. And sometimes along the way, you're gonna hear things that are gonna challenge what you normally think is true. So let's get started with the first quote, shall we? So this actually comes from a preface of the book, the 1999 preface, because there's two of them. When such categories come into question, the reality of gender is also put into crisis. It becomes unclear how to distinguish the real from the unreal. And this is the occasion in which we come to understand that we take to be real what we invoke as a naturalized knowledge of gender is, in fact, a changeable and revisable reality. Call it subversive or call it something else. There you go, uh, Judith Butler is trying to tell you that. He's trying to challenge your notion of reality. We're trying to discover what is real and what is unreal. And what is Judith Butler also trying to argue? To show that the naturalized knowledge of gender operates as a preemptive and violent circumscription of reality. She's trying to argue that reality is made in such a way, fashion, that is negative for human society, that is destructive, and is, is not conducive to the progress of people. We can't move forward as a society because of how the way reality is currently structured. Let's keep going with our second quote here. The presumption of a binary gender system implicitly retains the belief in a mimetic relation of gender to sex whereby gender mirrors sex or is otherwise restricted by it. When the constructed status of gender is theorized as radically independent of sex, gender itself becomes a free-floating artifice with the consequence that man and masculine might just as easily signify a female body as a male one, and woman and feminine a male body as easily as a female one. So there's a difference between sex and gender. Gender is how you identify yourself. It's you. 
is how you are, is how you act, is how you express yourself. Now sex is how the outside world sees you, how society as a whole identifies you as. Based on sociological norms, society might see you as a woman or a man. You know, based on how you look biologically, for instance, or the way you talk or the way you walk or your interests. Um, society might see you as a particular sex, although you m might actually uh, feel another way, right? That's the difference between sex and gender. Sex is sociologically determined. Gender is determined by you. And this tells us about how we define identity and also how we come to what's real. Although somebody may look masculine or feminine or like a man or a woman, that may not actually be the reality. It might feel more the opposite. So this tells us there's at least like there's alternative realities, right? There's the way society views you, there's that reality, and there's the way that you view yourself. That's that reality, right? Now which reality is valid and which one is not valid? Are they both valid? Are neither valid? <laughs> what is real <laughs> you know this is what we're getting at here and we're looking at gender as a microcosm an example to to figure this out let's turn to quote number three gender is a complexity whose totality is permanently deferred never fully what it is at any given juncture in time an open coalition then will affirm identities that are alternatively instituted and relinquished according to the purposes at hand it will be an open on assemblage that permits of multiple convergences and divergences without obedience to a normative telos of de definitional closure. So what Butler, Judith Butler is saying here is that gender is performative, is an action. To express gender, you have to perform it, right? You have to act it out. In what way do you act out your gender? Do you act it out in a way that aligns with social norms? Society sees you as a particular sex, therefore you will act out your gender to conform to that? Or do you act out your gender more in a way that more aligns with how you feel, how you want to express yourself? By determining what reality we want to live in, we act out our gender in a specific way to match that particular reality. In this way, reality is performative. <laughs> it's not so much fixed or static or a matter of fact. To what extent is identity a normative ideal rather than a descriptive feature of experience? In other words, the coherence and continuity of the person are not logically or analytic features of personhood, but rather socially instituted and maintain norms of intelligibility. Let's reiterate here with this quote. Gender is always a doing, though not a doing by a subject who might be said to pre-exist the deed. There is no gender identity behind the expressions of gender. The identity is performatively constituted by the very expressions that are said to be its results. So are we born a man or are we born a woman? Are we born more masculine or are we born more feminine? Uh, Judith but Butler argues that no, that's not the case. Really, we just perform a certain way or we act a certain way. And that is what expresses our gender, who we are. Our gender reality is determined by how we express ourselves, how we perform. So let's keep going. Let's go to our next quote to further ex examine this idea. If sexuality is culturally constructed within existing power relations, then the postulation of normative sexuality that is before, outside, or beyond power is cultural impossibility in a political impracticable dream, one that postpones the concrete and contemporary task of rethinking subversive possibilities for sexuality and identity within the terms of power itself. This critical task presumes, of course, that to operate within the matrix of power is not the same as to replicate uncritically relations of domination. So what is uh, Judith Butler talking about here? Well, what happens is that 
certain ideologies pop up or disciplines or practices like feminism that notice this what's going on with the whole sex and gender doesn't match right or that because people don't conform their gender realities to the social norms of sex and sexuality that they are oppressed or oftentimes the very act of conforming to social norms of sex that is oppression in itself right because you're not able to do certain certain things that you want to do because you have to cut out certain expressions away from your reality to consider to be considered normal in society so certain disciplines like feminism for instance or aspects of feminism say that we can rise above that we can escape that by putting the female gender the feminine on a pedestal and like highlighting its benefits in idealizing femininity and even idolizing femininity and Judith Butler argues that by doing that you're you're conforming you're still conforming to the, the sociological norms or the normative construct that uh, society has put into place by idolizing femininity or putting it on a pedestal or making it special you're, you're what you're ultimately doing is reinforcing the very structures that oppress you because you're further normalizing the reality of female and male, masculine and feminine social norms. You're just putting one on top of a pedestal. It's the same reality construct that uh, society created, which may or may not fall into everybody's individual reality, everybody's individual notion of their what their gender is. So Judith Butler is critiquing feminism, you know, saying that that kind of feminism that putting on a pedestal or idolizing uh, femininity that is in fact normalizing the very reality construct that was that's put in place to keep you down to keep uh, femininity subordinate or under masculinity let's go to our next quote if the regulatory fictions of sex and gender are themselves multiply contested sites of meaning, then the very multiplicity of their construction holds out the possibility of disruption of their univocal posturing. So Judith Butler is saying that there is a way to subvert this knowledge paradigm this, that was that's put in place by society, this masculine, feminine, oppressive, binary construct the way we do that is that we express our gender in the way that is true to ourselves and this expression of gender may not fall into masculine norms or feminine norms it may not or it may it may in fact can but the, if we express our genders in truthful ways rather than trying to conform or trying to look at the normative sociological construction of masculine and feminine male female if we just disregard that and just act true to ourselves gender wise then that is a way of fighting against the oppressive knowledge system that is a way of expressing a truer reality a reality true to ourselves rather than a sociological construct let us continue next quote the conclusion here is not that valid and demonstrable claims cannot be made about sex determination, but rather that cultural assumptions regarding the relative status of men and women and the binary relation of gender itself frame and focus the research into sex determination. The way culture has determined what sex is is not necessarily true to everybody's identification of their individual gender. Their individual reality doesn't match the reality of that society has put in place. And that needs to be acknowledged. Only from a self-consciously denutralizing position can we see how the appearance of naturalness is itself constituted. The presuppositions that we make about sex bodies, about them being one or the other, about the meaning that are said to inhere 
in them or to follow from being sexed in such a way are suddenly and significantly upset by those examples that fail to comply with the categories that naturalize and stabilize that field of bodies for us within the terms of cultural conventions. Hence, the strength, the incoherent, that which falls outside gives us a way of understanding the taken for granted world of sexual categorization as a constructed one, indeed as one that might well be constructed differently. It is possible to acknowledge gender identities that don't fall into those sociological categories. And not only acknowledge, but identify them as real and valuable. Constructs are thus real to the extent that they are fictive phenomena that gain power within discourse. These constructs are disempowered, however, through locutionary acts that implicitly seek recourse to the universality of language and the unity of being. So the idea here is that just because something is false doesn't mean it can't be instituted as a reality. In fact, what is real, what we consider real, may very well be false. It's just that it's real because we conform to that reality, that false reality. Reality is based on our actions or our performances. We act out reality. Reality is not determined before we act. So in that way, there's a difference between reality and truth. We might be a certain way or we might desire certain things or want certain things to happen for ourselves or the way we are, but all of that can never be realized or actualized because we are trying to conform or to or be normal in the standards of society. And the problem with that is that it's un we cannot realize our full potential. We might have a lot of things to contribute to the world, to society, to humanity, but what our contribution is not part of what society seems normal and therefore is disregarded and discarded, which is, in my opinion, a damn shame. But I do believe that humanity is um, held back tremendously because we restrict our reality. We uh, build our reality off of false knowledge paradigms. And if we allow truth to be more of a presence <laughs> in our society, our culture, if we let ex in the, in the experiences and the identities of individuals be tr truthfully expressed, then I believe there's a lot of progress that can be made, a lot of beneficial progress. So personally, I like this book, uh, Gender Trouble by Judy Butler, because she's talking about reality and how we restrict our reality and how we disregard truth and throw away who we are, who we really are, and what humanity can actually become. We throw that away just for the sake of con conforming to an oppressive society, an oppressive culture. And it's sad. And I feel that Judith Butler is just telling it like it is. So if you want to read some real feminism, some constructive feminism, some feminist theory, this is a great uh, book right here, Gender Trouble by Judith Butler. It is definitely, I would consider it for sure, a modern classic. Well, you've been watching The Black Ponder. Tune in next time for more Philosophical Thought.